how companies are uh, getting funded is changing. You know, uh, before AngelList, we really didn't have a way to see investors or see deals or uh, uh, participate. And uh, the, the world is, uh, I'm seeing several startups that are coming along to help companies get through the funding process. And Flash Funders is one of those. We're going to hear about how funding is changing. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to watch this. My name is Vincent Bradley. I'm the CEO, co-founder of Flash Funders. I serial entrepreneur, grew up in Michigan, hockey player um, that loves to compete, loves to um, help startups, loves to work with entrepreneurs, looking to make my dent in the world. Yay. So uh, real briefly, what, uh, this is for entrepreneurs, right? You know, we don't care if anybody else watches this one. Why do we need Flash Funders and what, what does it do? Yeah. So. Flash Funders empowers entrepreneurs to raise capital very efficiently um, at a massive reduction in the cost of what they would typically spend on securities lawyers. We provide them an end-to-end -end solution um, that involves everything from investment documents, online escrows, SEC form filing, and on top of that we have a marketplace that accredited investors can come and view deals and, and connect diligence and invest in those companies. Yeah. You know, uh, th your program is mostly for seed startups, right? Uh, people who are just starting getting going, right? Yeah, so we're focused on seed stage startups. It's a pretty simple deal. We offer a templatized term sheet. Flash Seed Preferred Startup can come in. They can spend no money on Flash Funders, no cash fees. We'll give them a term sheet. Um, when, when you're raising capital at the seed stage, keep your deal simple. Focus on building your business, focus on, on selling your company. Don't get caught up in the bureaucracy and that's the type of kind of solution that we offer. Yeah. When, when you're raising capital, uh, the old, let's talk about the old way of doing it. Uh, going to Ron Conway or somebody like, or <laughs> Jeff Clavier or uh, Esther Mark, Mark Cuban nowadays. <laughs> Mark Cuban, go on the Shark Tank. Shark Tank uh, complicates it because they take their own equity uh, when you're on, their on the Shark Tank. Exactly. So you got to be careful uh, who you're going to give your equity to. You know, yeah. are you going to go into Y Combinator? Are you going to go on Shark Tank? Are you going to go in, uh, you know, Founders Den or someplace else, right? Yeah. There's lots of choices. But let's just say, say it's a straight on deal. Uh, you got uh, somebody like uh, uh, Ron Conway or Jeff Clavier or Esther Dyson mm -hmm. uh, investing the old style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, why, what do I need you for? Why, why, why do you exist? Yeah, not, not to name drop. We've had some pretty big investors invest on Flash Funders already. Yeah. Um, our platform supports international investment, so we have guys investing from, from Switzerland, from London, from Israel, from Australia. One of the values that Flash Funders has is you can, you can get a link, you can click invest, you can go through the whole investment process, the compliance, signing your docs, linking your bank account, transferring money, you can do it in under 10 minutes. So even for Ron Conway or a Mark Cuban or a Mark Dine, one of the co-founders of Flash Funders who um, was the first investor in Skype, it gives them the, it empowers the entrepreneur as well as the investor to get the deal done very efficiently. So they're not wasting a bunch of time FedExing documents back and forth, um, not wasting a bunch of time getting wire information and calling their bank up. We make it simple for everyone. It, there's no reason that technology shouldn't, shouldn't impact capital financings. It hasn't virtually changed for 80 years, and it's kind of ridiculous to think about it. Yeah. Now, uh, for uh, your free assistance, thank you very much. <laughs> What do you get? Because uh, we all know that there's a game here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so Flash Funders is, is no cash fees. An entrepreneur can come to Flash Funders. They can use our platform. They can use our services, our marketplace. Um, in exchange, we are taking the right to invest or the option to participate in a future round. So we're playing with a couple of different business models right now. We are focused on being very, very, very entrepreneurial friendly. Yeah, we want to help entrepreneurs. We so those warrant you call these warrants, right? So those warrants uh, come due if you're a hot startup, if you're the next Uber or something. Yeah, like I mean that. that's that's one of the things because it gives you the ability to buy in and invest at the uh, at the uh, seed round and get a piece of uh, a hot company. Yeah, correct. That's that's one of the models that we're looking at. So we're calling it the, a right to invest. If if you raise capital and flash funders, we get a right to purchase into your company locked into the current terms and valuation that we help you at. Yeah. And that right would last for three years. And it's a very small right, you know, so we're not, we're not taking a majority stake in your company. We're talking about 1%, you know, very small piece. 
Um, and then we're also playing with a couple of different models where we would potentially invest in your next qualified finance. But getting that 1% is tough because I, I, I know how, how uh, everybody argued over Twitter, for instance, <laughs> right? And Fred Wilson got in, nobody, uh, you know, a lot of other people did. Well, that, right? that, that's, that's our play is that we want to help entrepreneurs, we want to save them money. That money should be spent on building their business today. And if they succeed, then we succeed. If they yeah. fail, then we don't succeed. Right then we fail. And it, it's a great model for you because you get to see uh, all the startups coming through, you get to see sort of their activity, and uh, you get a piece of them. That's, it's a brilliant <laughs> model on your part. Uh, Thank you. Because you get to see, uh, you get to be an early participant. And mo most companies are not going to be the next Uber, you know, but one out of a thousand probably will be, maybe three, right? Uh, will be a, a billionaire billion dollar company. I mean, several of these companies on the wall, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was examining well, the wall. It's pretty impressive, Robert. Yeah, new re yeah. new relic just went public last week, you know. And That's uh, awesome. my friend had a hundred thousand dollars in uh, LinkedIn <laughs> and did very well. Pulled out tens of millions of dollars. Our our securities law firm, Stubbs Allerton and Markless, its co-founder, actually did LinkedIn Series A. So we're very tied into that. You know, talking about some of these these absolutely game changers. I'll use Skype as an example because our guys were the first investor in Skype, one of our co-founders, Mark Dine. Skype, Skype actually struggled to raise capital at the seed stage. And you know, another great hundred billion, potentially future $100 billion company, Airbnb. Those guys were selling boxes of cereal on the streets, streets of SF to pay the bills. Yeah. It's an example of finding winners at the seed stage, picking winners, raising capital is difficult. And if flash funders can open up a little bit more access, make it a little bit easier, give a couple more opportunities to some quality entrepreneurs, then I'm all for it. Yeah. That's, that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah. And Why hasn't this happened until now? I, you know, we, we've had AngelList now for a couple of years, uh, or three years, something like that. Um, why hasn't crowd uh, funding taken off? Is it the SEC rules? Uh, tell me about the regulatory uh, complexities of this marketplace. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's a, it is a very complex regulatory climate right now. Flash Funders is, is regulated by the SEC, which is the general body in the United States, and then FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which regulates broker-dealers. We're a broker-dealer, which means we can help companies sell securities in this country. Without, make, without getting too complex and going down a rabbit hole, what I will say is that we are in the infancy, and there's a lot of work to be done. We feel that it's very important that this industry is regulated. We don't want to build a bubble. We don't want to open up access to capital for people that shouldn't be investing in the startups. Yeah. Having said that, we want to create more efficiency. Um, not, not dissimilar to what happened with the public markets in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s with discount brokerage firms, the rise of Charles Schwab's and Fidelity's. Very few Americans had access to public stocks at that point. And Charles Schwab came along and he opened up access and then the internet really opened up access. What's happening right now within the private markets is very, it, it, it parallels that where not a lot of technology has impacted it and we're starting to add some technology and it's gonna be better for the entrepreneurs, it's gonna be better for the investors. Um, I think it's gonna take time. The regulators obviously don't like change. Um, we, we know that, we've been dealing with them for the last year. When we talk specifically about flash funders, why no one's done flash funders, it really is the perfect storm where we had a, a prolific investor in Mark Dine get together with a, a very successful securities law firm, Stubbs Allerton Markles, which is famous for the Beats transaction and, and the Skype transaction, and, and Europlay Capital Advisors, which is Mark's merchant bank. And they took a broker dealer, they took a securities law firm, and they went out and partnered with some young entrepreneurs, and we built the technology platform to pair it. And so that's really what makes us unique. Yeah. Do you do deals where you actually invest in the deals, or are, are you just going to be a service provider? A, uh, bring all your money in here, put it in, and you get your uh, legal documents and everything's covered, everything's easy. Is, is that sort of the sales pitch, or are you actually going to be uh, pouring money into Yeah, into so. Some, and, and maybe even advice and doing a. I mean, why, why does Y Combinator <laughs> exist, right? It yeah. helps companies get started because there's a, a, there's a network of 500. Uh, 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 funders who went through, entrepreneurs who went through that program, right? And, I, and, I, and many I, of them have become a, a billion dollar company. Yeah, so. I saw a recent Sam Altman quote where estimated they've created 30 billion in value, which is, which is pretty impressive for Y Combinator, a little shop like that created yeah. 30 billion in value. I mean, that's, that's, that's our goal. We want to capture long-term value, we want to help create value. When, when we talk about do we invest in companies, 
Flash Funders is focused on being a marketplace. We want to be the go-to place to raise your seed capital. Yeah. Um, we are associated with a lot of micro venture firms, um, early stage VCs that do invest. We'll be looking to um, raise funds on the platform, not dissimilar to what some other people are doing. Um, we personally don't want to invest. Maybe in the future that's a route we go because we have access to so many great companies, we raise, raise a fund. But right now we're focused on just, just being the marketplace, being the utility. Yeah, that's cool. Um, are you going to work with AngelList or, or are you seeing this as competitive with AngelList? Is this, because uh, AngelList is the one that I, <laughs> I know where all the investors are hanging out. Yeah, right? yeah and AngelList is the golden standard right now and Novel Robert Khan and those guys are, are truly visionaries, brilliant. We probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the future holds. I, I know that we have a great, great, great um, tool for entrepreneurs, a great platform marketplace for investors to access deals. And in the future, if there's a if there's a partnership that could be um, that could add value to Angelus and add value to Flash Funders or um, another company out there, potentially we would explore it. Very cool. Tell me about the competitive landscape. I know there's Cedars over in Europe. Are they doing the similar kind of thing? And I, I know uh, Crowded Rocket's going to be here this afternoon and is trying to do something similar, a little bit more on the advice side and less on the mm -hmm. drug worth side. So they might still need your services to. Uh, uh, handle all the rules, you know? But yeah, I mean, it's it's a very competitive space. There's a lot of players out there. It's obviously a very exciting time right now. Yeah. With the Jobs Act a couple years ago, the regulations are changing. It's a little bit of the wild, wild west. Yeah. We like where we're positioned right now because of that, how we're butted up with the regulators and we have that broker-dealer license and, and we are a securities law firm. There's some really solid competition. Without, without bragging about my competition, I'm here to talk about flash funders. I will say there's some stiff competition. There's a lot of people doing it right. For us to be successful, we have to build an industry, so we want, we want solid competition. We're, we're talking about educating a ton of people internationally that don't have access to startup investing. Yeah. We, we look at startup investing as another form of alternative investment. And high net worths around the world want to access these deals and startups want their money in some cases you know not all startups need strategic capital some of them just need checks to, to get over the goal line yeah and so when there's a, a explosion when i was at web summit there was something like six thousand startups in rows <laughs> you know there's an explosion of startups i've never seen anything like it um, i went to the university of michigan there's a there's a huge entrepreneurship program there now and they're popping up all around the country usc has a big entrepreneurship program ucla has a big incubator um, we just sponsored an event at UCLA where they had a thousand people hackathoning. So it's, it's definitely a good time to be involved in the tech space. When they talk about tech entrepreneurs being the 21st century um, rock stars, I think that's pretty accurate. It's, it's, it's exciting, definitely. Yeah. How, uh, tell me about the company, because you already alluded it's an unusual kind of company made up of uh, different, uh, different people from mm -hmm. uh, lawyers to, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, investors. Tell me how, how the company got started and how did, how did you guys get funded? Yeah, yeah. So Flash Funders, when the Jobs Act happened um, back in 2012, Mark Dine, first investor in Skype, he's the chairman of Atomico. Uh, he um, has his own merchant bank, Europlay Capital Advisors. Um, he advises several VCs up here in the Bay. Mark got together with Scott Ellerton, Murray Markleys, the guys at Stubbs Ellerton Markleys, which is a securities law firm based in Los Angeles. And they basically said, we have to be a part of this. We have to be a part of what's going on within the security industry. They, they, they both go back 30 years investing and helping startups grow, and they saw a massive opportunity. So they, they started this thing as a project internally, and very quickly they realized that, okay, if we're gonna do this right, we need to partner with some entrepreneurs that can help us build it. And so myself, my co-founder, Brian Park, we ended up partnering with Europlay and Stubbs. Stubbs has provided incredible legal resources, um, all the expertise we need. Europa Capital Advisors has experience in, in growing companies from zero to 8.6 billion, which is what they sold Microsoft, or excuse me, sold Skype to Microsoft for. Yeah. And we've been working on this thing for over two years now. Um, we spent a year working with the regulators to get approval to actually operate our business in a compliant, regulated manner, um, which, which happened about six weeks ago. And since then, we funded three companies now, um, some very exciting companies, Influential Network, which does influencer marketing, which is a whole nother conversation. We have these crazy influencers out there now with millions of social media followers, and the brands want to get a piece of them. So we've, we've successfully funded them. Um, 
We have an FBO software company that, that works with all the small airports around the country. Um, and we have an auto app where you can buy and sell your used car in a very efficient way. Yeah. Let me just see the site just to, uh, yeah, to know yeah, what, what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you hit Discover Startups, you can check out a couple of these companies. Yep. It's, it's not different than your, your traditional angel list or your traditional crowdfunding page where it's, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, what really separates flash funders is the plumbing. So when you click this invest button yeah. and you type in how much you want to invest, so you, know, you want to invest 500,000, it shows you how many shares you would buy, what percentage of the company you would buy, and when you click invest, you then enter into an investment flow where you're gonna give your basic information, which we're gonna run banking compliance on. Yeah. You're going to- You have to be a, a accredited investor, which is, I, f I forget how many, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, a year. Yeah, 200,000 a year in income yeah. or a million dollar net worth. Yeah. So you have to be an accredited investor to invest. We will do an accreditation step on our platform, so we'll verify your accreditation. Um, link a bank account, allow you to transfer money into the, your, into the company's escrow account. And in 10 days after the deal's closed, we'll send you your shares. And for all intents and purposes, the relationship with Flash Funders will be over. Yeah. We'll make sure the company and the investor move forward in a compliant manner. Now, uh, before this, I've heard of uh, uh, companies really worrying about how many investors they have because that kicks them into a different uh, category. Is that something that anybody needs to worry about at the seed stage, or is that something you need to worry about you know, when you start getting to be Uber <laughs> you know, and taking on billions of dollars? <laughs> 2.6 billion this year. <laughs> it's crazy, um, isn't it? It is crazy, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think you need to worry about how many investors are in your company at the seed stage. I can't imagine... I've raised capital for a couple businesses now, and I can't imagine having to deal with, with more, more than five to 10 investors at the C stage. I mean, I, I have a good amount of investors right now in my company because we were co-founded by a securities law firm and a, and a merchant bank venture firm. So um, dealing with a large number of investors, I think is a death penalty at an early stage for a company. So one of the things that we're, we're focusing on flash funders is we allow entrepreneurs to raise their minimum investment. So we have a platform minimum of 2,500, but if an entrepreneur is raising a million dollars and they want no more than 10 investors, they may raise their minimum up to 100,000. Yeah. Um, and so we empower them to do that. I, I think it's very, very, very important that a company doesn't take on too many investors. And also, personally, um, when we were looking at how we wanted to build this platform that we allowed for direct investing. Yeah. So I don't, want, I don't want to talk about our competitors too much, but most of our competitors because they're not broker dealers, the only way that they can receive compensation for working with companies is to create these SPVs, special purpose vehicles, which are an actual an LLC, which the investor invests into. And then that LLC invests into the company. And when we decided to go the route of building flash funders, several of our investors had actually been, been um, screwed dealing with SPVs, where you, they didn't control their own destiny and they lost a lot of money. So it's very important to us that we allowed investors to invest directly into companies where they control their fate, their destiny. And so we didn't go the SPV route, and that meant a lot more regulation to deal with, um, a lot more money to get that approval. Um, yeah. But because of that, we allow very quality investors to invest directly into quality companies. Yeah. And that's, that's important for us. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to understand why. More complexity with SPVs, um, you don't control your own destiny. So. It was a no-brainer for us. It, you know, at, at uh, Web Summit, you saw these 6,000 startups, and, and many of them are one or two people sitting at a desk, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. I saw Instagram, and it was two people sitting at a, at a little desk, like out here at Geekdom, right? Um, do you need a lawyer at that stage, you know, when you're taking a, a million dollars or half a million dollars to just to get funded and get, and get enough time to build the product and, and get to the market and stuff like that? Do you, do you need to worry about securities lawyers, even if you're going through that? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is what I tell our companies. You definitely, you definitely need a lawyer. You need a lawyer because you never know what's going to come up. Um, and there's, 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 always, there's always things that you need to deal with as a company. Having said that, when it comes to the actual transaction of raising capital, investment documents, filing forms with the SEC, filing forms with the states, making sure your investors are accredited. There's, there's just no reason to spend $250 on paralegals and $550 on securities lawyers when it's very, very, very simple. So what Flash Funders has done is we've taken technology, we've made the process super easy for an investor, for an entrepreneur, 
and we take care of the transaction. So you're not gonna spend money, if you come to Flash Burners, you're not gonna spend money on the transaction. Yeah, it's really brilliant. Anything else I need to know about, about uh, what you guys are doing and what you're seeing happen in the marketplace? Because I think this represents a, a significant shift on, on uh, how companies can get funded, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that excites us is Silicon Valley is, is clearly still the place to start a company and to raise capital. Yeah. We have some really quality companies that are raising capital from across America right now and across the world. We've had investment come in from, from Switzerland. We've had investment come in from France. We've had investment come in from London. We've had an investment come in from Montana and Wyoming, which is, which is to us very exciting. In the Mon Montana, Wyoming case, it was actually in the FBO software company, Vesix. And those guys both own private jets and they both fly around the country and they now live in Montana and Wyoming and they never would have been able to access that deal had it not been for a platform that, that provided them the ability to view deals and, and generally solicit to publicly view these deals. So I think that's the future is we're going to have, I, I still think companies are going to go where the talent is and the talent's in SF and where the money is, but I do think we're going to start. Yeah, that's trying to shift, but yeah. Yeah. We're going to see, we're going to see. Even um, Facebook's opening offices everywhere in the world. Well, well, <laughs> you know, the great, the great thing that I like to say, and, and Mark Zuckerberg's kind of made this comment a couple of times, had Flash Funders been around five years ago, Facebook would have been located in Boston. Yeah. Facebook would have been headquartered in Boston. He, would have, he was all about open source. He was all about um, raising capital in, in an efficient manner. I mean, this is his mentality. Yeah. They wouldn't have needed to leave Boston. They would have raised capital. They would have said, he moved to Silicon Valley for capital. Yeah. And so I think that's- Well, and that business expertise, the lawyers, the, yes. the journalists, true. The, the money, well, everything. True. I, right. Yes. But I do think we're going to start seeing big companies. I don't agree with you, I, and I think he's uh, a revision. He, he's uh, has a little revisionist history. I'm going to see him this afternoon. Okay. Because uh, now he needs to hire people in Boston, so he needs to be nice to Boston instead I mean, of being hey, he is, Boston. He is, he is one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our generation. He so absolutely is. If I can leverage him to sell the entrepreneurs, I'll do it. Well, cool. Where do I learn more about it? Um, go to flashfunders.com. Very cool. Um, reach out to me. Call me anytime. Email me. I'm always available. Love to help startups. Very cool. Thanks awesome. so much. Thank you, Robert. Thanks. Pleasure. Pleasure.